All right, this is going to be a quick note on uh, why we use the yield to maturity. So uh, often, uh, or what it's useful for. So often I'll, I'll ask students, um, what do you use the yield to maturity for? And they'll say, well, uh, we use it to get the bond's price. So now the idea of that is, um, the problem there is, of course, how do you get uh, the, the yield to maturity? Uh, reminding you know how you get the yield to maturity, of course, is you, um, you you are going to take the bonds price. So I'm just going to say bonds price here, um, and I'll just use uh, general cash flow. It's the cash flow at time one in the bond, so it's the coupon uh, divided by one plus the yield to maturity uh, plus cash flow time two plus often the you know the, the final cash flow cash flow at time t one plus yield to maturity squared. Assuming uh, 1 plus yield to maturity time t. Of course, you set up this equation, you solve uh, for the yield to maturity. So you use um, something like the Newton Raphson algorithm. So you just solve for the root in a polynomial. Of course, the way you probably do this in Excel is you sit there and say, okay, well, I'll have 0 equal to uh, the bond price, negative the bond price plus these terms and you use the IRR function, right? Uh, IRR of this, uh, uh, because this is also why we say the yield to maturity is the internal rate of return of the bond. So now, what's, what's going on here? Uh, if I want to find the bond's price, I use um, the yield to maturity. Of course, if I want to use the yield to maturity, if I want to find the yields to maturity, I use the bond's price. So of course, what you're seeing here is this is circular, right? So obviously we can't find use the yield to maturity to find uh, the bond's price or, or more accurately the bond's value. We do not use the yield to maturity for bond valuation. What we use the yield to maturity for is for translating uh, the, a given yield to a given bond's price. So underlying this is the idea is if you ask me what a bond's price is and I tell you the price, it's not that useful. Uh, so I quote the yield to maturity. I quote the yield to maturity to you, knowing that you can translate from the yield to maturity to the price. Now, why is a bond's price not that useful? Uh, the idea here is take a one-year treasury note uh, issued today. That's going to have a, a you know, uh, it's going to coupons to be the yield to maturity, so it's going to trade for about a thousand. Now, a ten-year treasury note issued nine years ago is also a one-year uh, treasury note. So that bond issued ten years ago might have been uh, uh, issued with a rate of. 7%. So over that time, it, you know, now one of your treasures, uh, they're probably about 1%. Uh, so they're going to trade far above par. They're going to trade for, you know, 1,100, 1,200. So both, uh, both one year treasury notes, but one trades for 1,000 and one trades for, let's say, um, uh, 1,200. Uh, 1, so it's not useful for me to, so for a, a given one year treasury note, there are many different bond prices. But all these bond prices are going to imply the same yield, the same yield to maturity. So that's why I can quote you one yield to maturity for a, a one-year treasury notes, or one yield to maturity for five-year, 10-year, 30-year treasury notes. Every maturity is going to have one yield to maturity, even though every maturity has vastly different bond prices. Hence, we quote you, instead of saying the bond's price, we just tell you the yield to maturity, and then you can apply the yield to maturity to that particular bond and get what the bond's price uh, is. So the, the, so the yield to maturity is a way that we quote bonds. Uh, this is how much you earn on this bond. Um, uh, of course, I'll have another brief note on if you buy a bond, uh, and you, you're not guaranteed to earn the yield to maturity. So I'll, 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 I'll have another brief video on that. Uh, but so what we're doing here is we're simply um, telling you uh, we're translating. So there, there, there's no real bond valuation going on in here. So now you say, okay, well, how do you value bonds? Well, um, uh, certainly uh, uh, we value bonds by uh, discounting each cash flow by its, uh, the, the discount rate. So in other words, what you can do, uh, so now you want to switch to actual bond valuation instead of just you know, how we quote bonds in terms of yield to maturity. One way you can value bonds is you would sit there and say, okay, well, uh, we have a zero coupon curve. We have uh, uh, the, the rates on zero coupons. These are, these are the strip rates. Uh, and I can uh, apply, so you know, I might use uh, one plus the rate 
on a, let's just say these are annual. So this would be a one year zero, uh, one plus the rate on a two year zero squared, um, and the one plus the rate plus the rate on a T year zero, right? Uh, apply these to the cash flows, the time T. Uh, and this is going to give me uh, the bonds, the bonds value. I think I've been using price, but I'll just say BP for the bonds price or the bonds value. Uh, now, if it's a cor if it's a corporate bond, you have to add in some default premium here. So you would you would start with the the zero coupon uh, curve. So this would be maturity. Um, this is uh, the interest rate. So this is this is the the pure time value of money by the zero coupon uh, strip rates. And you would add in some default premium. Of course, what you could also do to value a bond is to say, okay, well, this bond is, that is uh, um, is is very similar to an outstanding bond. So I might say, okay, well, this has about exactly the same risk as uh, a bond on you know, Apple Computer, right? So I'll just use Apple Computer's yield to maturity to get the value of this bond, right? So maybe it's not a perfect example. Maybe it's a Cisco bond, right? So I'm going to I'm going to take the yield to maturity. I can observe the yield to maturity on Apple bonds, and I'll use it to apply um, that to to value a Cisco bond, and that's perfectly fine because it's not circular. However. Uh, it would be sort of, it's circular to say I'm going to use the yield to maturity on an Apple bond to value um, the, you know, the same Apple bond, right? That's circular. But you can certainly use the yield to maturity on one bond to apply it to another. And, and so you can, for, you know, and if it's uh, Apple 10 year and a Cisco 10 year, um, you know, that, that, works, that works perfectly. Uh, so I hope that made sense. I hope you see the, the difference between what we use yield to maturity for and then how that's different from actually finding the value of a bond. Good.